Hi, I'm Leonard. I work with Pierce RV in Billings, Montana, and today we're going to be doing a walkthrough on a 14,000 pound 2018 Keystone Sprinter. We're located in the front compartment of your fifth wheel. You have two stab jack handles up here. One is slotted, one is three quarter. The slotted one you'll use to lower your spare tire, which attaches right here, to lower it on a cable system. You have two Group 27 12 volt batteries. Both are vented out. Your battery disconnect switch is located to the rear behind the right hand battery back here mounted to the bottom plate. Up here you have a Furion solar charge quick connect for your external uh, solar panels that you would like to set up out here. Hitch light located by the compartment. Located on the driver's side front of your fifth wheel, you'll see your weights, your VIN, and all your fifth wheel information right here. Right below, you'll see your tire information and pressures straight from the factory. On the inside of your propane compartment, you'll see the walkthrough step-by-step -step of how to operate your Lippert Ground Control 3.0 electronic leveling system. If we move up, to turn it on, simply press your power button. And to scroll through the menu, use the down arrow. Shows you your battery and how close you are to level or to center on each one of these and how far they're extended. To retract all, enter to begin. And we'll go all the way to the main right here. To retract any of them, simply press to retract. LED is illuminated. You can retract your landing gear or your rear two stabilizer jacks. You can do the same on your left and right. When you first park your fifth wheel, you want to be as close to level as possible before you start your auto level sequence. Once you turn it on and you have disconnected from your truck, all you need to do is just simply hit your auto level button and this system will automatically level your fifth wheel. And on the front driver's side of the fifth wheel, you'll have your propane storage compartment. Each bottle is full. To operate the propane bottles, you'll have a handle on the top of each. Right now, the re propane regulator switch is pointing towards this hose, which is operating this bottle. To make sure your propane is on, there's a green or red indicator light at the top of the regulator. Right now, we are operating off of this bottle. It is on, and we do have pressure in the system. Now, when this one runs completely empty, you can switch over to the other bottle and turn the handle on. It is possible to run both bottles at the same time. Both these handles have to be on when it's located in the upright position. But we don't recommend that as you could possibly run yourself completely out of propane while you're dry camping somewhere. This is your main pass-through storage compartment. Lots of storage. To the right, you'll see a small access door that swings on a bolt here. It'll swing down and up and out of the way. This unit has been winterized, so everything is in the winterized position. Located at the base of this hose, there will be a white quarter turn valve. When the handle is turned toward this hose, it will the pump, water pump will siphon out of your antifreeze jug into this hose and into your water system through the fifth wheel. When you're ready to dewinterize, you will turn that white valve in line with the uh, hose running perpendicular to this hose. 
Behind the water heater located back there, you'll also see the bypass valves located back there. Right now, again, it has been winterized, so it is in the bypass mode. This is your docking station for the sprinter. You'll bring your water hose. This is where it'll hook into here. Up here, you do have an indicator to show you what is what located in your bay down here. Now, when you hook your water line up, if you do not wish to use your fresh water tank, you can just keep it in the down position and you'll be operating off of the pressure limited by the spigot you are hooked to. We highly recommend that you get a water regulator attachment which hooks directly to your port here and the other end to your hose. When you're ready to fill your fresh water tank, simply quarter turn your valve horizontal into the tank fill position. Over here, you have your black tank flush. When using this, it's really important to make sure your black tank valve, valve handle down here is pulled open to prevent any overfilling into the unit. Up here, you have a quick connect and access to hot and cold water. The hose for this quick connect is located in your compartment over here, along with your spray handle. You also have your cable TV and satellite TV connections. You have small doors that can be moved out of the way to run your water line and cable lines in and still be able to lock them into position for security. This is your six gallon suburban water heater. It is a direct start ignition water heater, which means there's no pilot. You have to come outside and light. Everything is controlled from your main panel on the inside. This is your overpressure valve or your pop-off valve. This is your electric switch your main electric switch. When operating the electric side of the water heater, you must turn this to the on position. This is the anode rod and plug, which is inserted into the bottom of the water heater and turned in here. The size of this plug is one and one eighth inch. To the right, we have a furnace exhaust. It does get very hot. Watch out for little ones, they could get burned. And don't lean anything against your camper on the outside over here for safety reasons. Located on the driver's side of the fifth wheel, under the J-wrap, you'll see your connection for your sewer hose. Capped off. Just turn this, this will come off. You can turn your hose on right here. Over here, we have your valves for your, main, for your black tank and your main gray tank. They are labeled at the top of the J-wrap up here. Always dump your black tank first, followed by your gray tank. This will ensure that the gray tank helps wash out your hose at the end of the dumping. These are your low point valves, color coordinated. This is your cold side, this is your hot side. They are in the open position for winterize right now. When you go to fill your fresh water system or go to use your fifth wheel for the first time, you must ensure that these valves are closed for proper operation. 
located down past the main dumping pipe, you will see your fresh water dump valve. It is a handle located here, and it's behind your axle here. It is in the open position right now for winterizing. When you go to fill your fresh water tank, you want to ensure that the valve is pressed firmly into position, and then you can fill your fresh water. Two. Located under your main kitchen slide out, still on the driver's side, you'll see a second discharge pipe for your gray water from the kitchen. Located directly above the discharge pipe is your handle. Pull this firmly out, it'll open the valve and dump everything out of your gray tank located from the kitchen. We have your ventilation for your refrigerators located on the driver's side rear. The air moves into the bottom louvers and out of the top. These again are direct start ignition from the, from the inside. So you don't have to remove these and light any kind of pilot to be able to run off of propane. These are your drain lines for each refrigerator. At the end of each of these drain lines, you have these plugs that are firmly in position right now. It is very important that these plugs are in place and that you check periodically through your season that they are in place. If these are not in place, as you're traveling down the road, these have the potential of pulling the cold out of your refrigerator. These help regulate the airflow from your drain lines. Two. Located at the very rear driver's side, you have your power connection. This is a 50 amp service, and this co cable does come with the unit. At the back bumper, you'll have a cap on both ends of the, of the bumper where your sewer hose can be easily stored and away from the rest of your items in your storage compartments. Located at the top of the back panel, it is pre-wired for a Furion camera. This system is pre-wired into the clearance lights. So for this camera system to operate properly, once the camera is installed, you want to ensure that the headlights of your truck is on. All your clearance lights will be on, which will help for proper operation of your camera in your truck. We're here at your outside kitchen. This is a 120 volt refrigerator. Your television is also 120 volt. You have lighting around the perimeter of your kitchen. The switch is located to the right of the television here. For your stove, very easily operated down into position and back up. To hook your gas stove line in, you have a 10 foot quick connect hose. A hose connected to the bottom of your stove here. In the off position, connect your stove hose to your quick connect. The other end will connect to your camper to the rear of the axle. Located here. Again, to connect them, you have to have this in the off position. Press back, push holes in, just like so. Turn the gas on here and on the other quick connect other end. I'm sure that is also on. And from there, you're ready to run your stove.
This is not a direct start stove. You have to use either a match or a barbecue lighter to be able to operate this one. To the front passenger side of your fifth wheel, you have a 120 volt outlet connection here to the left of your main compartment door. Another access to your compartment, pass through is on this side and your light switch is located here. You also have your TV connections located to the top left of this door. So if you wanted to set up a TV underneath your awning on the outside, easily accessed here. It's time we head to the inside of your brand new Keystone Sprinter. Located to the right of the main door, you'll have your main operations panel here. To check your levels of all your tanks and your battery are located on these buttons here. Fresh tank is empty, it's been winterized. Battery level, fully charged. Black tank, located here. It does have another black tank button here, but it's just this model of panel that they installed. This is your only functioning black level indicator. Gray tank number one, black tank, we've already covered that, this is extra. Your gray tank two, and then gray three, which is not used. Your water pump switch located here. Electric water heater, gas water heater, both located here. We've already covered your main switch on the water heater on the exterior. This will run your propane. Ceiling lights, easy enough. These, this will run all four of your slides here, in and out. Awning and awning light. This is your remote. Factory set pin is zero, 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 zero. Awning light, leveling system to retract and extend basic operations just like your outside panel. Auto leveling to return to the main menu. Press once. Awning operation, same, out and in. Slide one, out and in. There is a next page up here, which will operate the other three slides, all operating the same way as that first one we gave an example of. Press and hold the button to turn off your remote. And back into the storage. For safety, we have your fire extinguisher located by the main door. To check for pressure, it's this green button here. Press it down. As long as it comes back up, your pressure is good. You have a smoke detector located above the couch and recliners located there. To test it, there's a button on it. Your LP and CO, or propane and carbon monoxide detector, is located below the kitchen island, located there. There's a test button below the green indicator light, and they recommend you replace those about every 60 months or five years. Going back by our main panel, we have your thermostat located here. It's three buttons, very simple. This one will toggle you through your main operations here. So as you press it, it's in the off position, press it again, it'll run just your fan. Low, high, then your cooling system, which will operate your AC in the main living area only. High, low, auto, and then over the furnace here, or your heat. 
to change the temperature setting you, you wish, that is just the arrows here. Automatically goes to heat. I'm going to scroll through and turn it back off. Right there. We're in the kitchen of your 2018 Keystone Sprinter. Great counter space, lovely kitchen. You do have a max air fan up above. Large sink with your flexible hose. The lights around your island are located here. Microwave is located behind me. You do have to be plugged into a 120 source, so either your shore power or generator to be able to use your microwave. Over here, you have your range hood. Power on, power off. Fan operations, there are three settings. This one operates your light. And this one is to set your clock. To set it, you just press and hold the clock button and you can scroll through setting your hour and minutes. Here's your stove. The stove top is automatic spark light. Move it to light, hit your ignition source, and it works the same on all three burners. The oven is located below. This one is not on your automatic light. You'll have to use a match or a barbecue lighter. The pilot light is located in the rear of the oven. You will turn your knob, press and hold for your pilot until your pilot light is lit, and then hold this in, giving it a, a 20 to 30 seconds would be long enough to heat up your thermocouple enough to keep your pilot light lit. Lots of storage in here. Located to my right at the bottom of the cupboard. Down here is your power panel. <laughs> All your AC breakers, your 12 volt DC fuses, everything is labeled and gives what amp fuse to be using. Same here, everything is labeled and everything is on here. And the double fridges, lots of storage space for those long trips. We'll go over the functions on this refrigerator here. This one will give your temperature readout. On your buttons over here, you have your on off button, your auto and gas button. Looking over here, there's an indicator light underneath the auto. If you wanted to switch to propane only, you would hit your auto and gas button. The LED switches to gas only. There's no pilot light on the back that you have to light. These are uh, direct start ignition. The temperature settings range from one to five, five being the coldest setting. And to the right of the refrigerators, we have your recliners to be able to recline. Tucked and hidden, you have a handle on each side. Just pull the handle, foot comes out, you can recline back. Reading lights, switch here, and your couch is located to the left. This does, <laughs> excuse me, have a hide-a-bed in it. Your cushions are held on by Velcro on the back. So you would remove your cushions, lift, and this will come out, your legs being here, adding much more room for sleeping space. You have your entertainment center located in the center of your living room. Very large TV, sound system, 
This is your CD player as well as your DVD player and your fireplace located here. Power on and off on the far right and then your basic functions over here. To the right, you have your Max Air fan, which is located above your kitchen over there. And the top left button, be able to open and turn your fan on. It is a one button press. And the same thing to turn it off on the bottom left of the controller. Press it once, and the limb switch located on the fan will turn the fan off as the cover comes down. And we'll cover the front end of your camper now. You want a banister down the hallway into the bathroom. Large bathroom, large shower, commode located to the bottom right, vanity, light switch is on the right hand wall, located here. Your GFCI outlet is located in the bathroom here. You test pressing the red button, red indication light comes on, press the Reset button and it resets. You have to be plugged into shore power or generator power for that to re be able to reset. Up above the commode, we have your manual fan, exhaust fan, and your fan switch is located here. Large bedroom, back here, light switch located by the bed, large bed, large storage underneath, above your light switch is your TV connections, this one here is your antenna booster, with the light on it'll help amplify the signal um, sent to your TVs for television. Off, on, power. And on this wall here, you can easily feel where there's a backer board right in here to be able to uh, mount your TV. We do have a drawer removed back here to be able to show you it is pre-plumbed for a washer dryer setup back behind the drawer. You would have to remove a large section of these cupboards to be able to get that set up for a washer and dryer, but it is pre-plumbed for it. Large closet. And adjustable seat, more storage located under there. and your dresser drawers. Air conditioner in the bedroom operates uh, independently from your main thermostat. This one will be your temperature setting. Red indicates warmer, cold, cooler. Here is your uh, fan and cooling settings. Low cool. Well, you have an arrow on this end which will indicate what, which setting you will be in. Right now, that's low fan, high, oh, yeah. Fan, high fan, low cool, high cool. Again, you can change your temperature that you wish to set in your bedroom with this setting here. At this time, we would take, like to uh, take one long video clip of your entire unit, inside and out, to be able to cover uh, in one segment everything. Uh, congratulations on your purchase. It's a very nice unit. Thank you.